Hey, welcome to another episode of Not Scrum Dumb Podcast. I am Andriana Marshall, and that is Grand Scrum Master Scott. We are both professional scrum trainers at scrum.org. And today we're going to be talking about is being a scrum master right for you? This is a hot button topic. Everyone is trying to figure out how they get into tech or transition to another role in tech and a, or their project managers who would like to transition and it seems like a natural fit or maybe it isn't. We'll talk about that in a second. But Scrum is a framework that is widely used to help teams work together more effectively and efficiently. The Scrum Master plays a crucial role in the framework, serving as a teacher, coach, facilitator, and servant leader for the team. But Being a Scrum Master is not for everyone. It requires a unique set of skills and qualities, including good communication, facilitation, coaching, and leadership skills, as well as a strong sense of values and principles. So in this episode, we'll be exploring the key factors you should consider when you're deciding whether to pursue a career as a Scrum Master. We think this is a really important topic because people have asked the question, if I, if I should be one, and you know, we tend to ask questions right back to them to see if that's something you actually want to do. So we're going to dive deeper uh, in today's episode to help you understand that. So with that, Scott, uh, Tell the people what a Scrum Master actually does. We should start there, probably. Seems like a good place. There's a lot of misconception. That's fine. What does a Scrum Master do? Uh, According to the Scrum Guide, a Scrum Master is the uh, person on the Scrum team that makes sure the Scrum Guide is used and used well. Now, in the Scrum Guide in the 2020 version, it says the Scrum uh, Master is a true leader. I like the old guy that says it's a servant leader, true leader, servant leader, common denominator. You're a leader, not a manager. You're a leader. Now, also in the scrum guide, we service three levels. We service the scrum team. We service specifically the product owner. And we also serve the greater organization. Andriana, does that help? Anything to add to that? Yeah, I would add one more thing. It's not a project manager. There seems to be a lot of confusion about that. Like, oh, our project manager should just be our scrum master. Maybe your project manager doesn't want to be a scrum master. And that's perfectly fine. There's a place for a project manager that I personally believe still exists in the marketplace. That's a whole different video, though. But <laughs> but <laughs> I think we can get started with what we believe the first question that you should ask yourself is. All right. There we are. Yeah. So I think... Personally, this was the one I feel really strongly about is sticking to your principles and values. So can you speak up and stand firm when faced with challenging, challenging situations? So you're going to deal with all types of personalities. That includes leaders who want burn down charts, which don't make any sense. They don't want to focus on the right metrics. They care more about velocity and output instead of outcome. You're going to have to speak up and say, this isn't the right path. This isn't the right, these aren't the right metrics, or maybe even something where people are not being the best and disrespectful to each other. So there are so many different um, areas and reasons to speak up. What do you think, Scott? I like everything you said. I mean, just to recap, um, just to highlight something you said, it is super duper important to have a strong sense of values and principles in Scrum. We've done a video already on mechanical scrum, which is basically using the mechanics of scrum, omitting the values and the values are equally as important as everything else. And also, I want to uh, identify another thing I was thinking about as you were speaking. I'm thinking about velocity. I've been in a situation where I had a manager come to me and say, hey, I need you to help the team raise their velocity by 25 percent. And that kind of goes back to what you just said, Andriana, that, you know, If you're getting pressure from management, do you have or can you embody the value of courage to kick back and say, hey, if you do that, if we make a a number of a a target, people might game it. So we don't want to do that. That's just an example for you. Anything else to add on that topic, Andriano? I think that's good. We go to the next one. All right. The next question for you. Influencing others without authority. Take it away. Yeah. Are you comfortable leading people without direct authority? 
I fortunately or unfortunately, depends on how you look at it, <laughs> have not had to deal with direct reports, which I personally liked. I like being an individual contributor, but it does require a strong sense of self building off the with the previous question. If people can trust you to stick to your values and principles, that's one way to build trust so that they actually do want to follow you. So it takes a lot more for people to actually want to follow you versus you're, you're their assigned manager. They're going to need to meet with you on a regular basis. You write their review. It's a whole different dynamic. I like everything you said. Now, I'm going to add, let's say, a scrum guy take to it. How... Um, can you lead others without authority on a scrum team? Well, that's where your facilitation skills come into play because we're going to facilitate events as requested or needed. That's where your coaching skills will come into play. So if you feel like you might be weak in coaching skills, maybe that's something you might want to work on before you go down this path. Or when you get in this path, take a self-assessment and say, hey, I'm weak in coaching skills and figure out where you need to go to get those coaching skills from. Uh, we also cause the removal of impediments. An impediment is something that prevents the team from accomplishing their goals. We're collaborating with stakeholders. I've been in some situation where at some point in time, the product owner is going to go on vacation and it's up to the scrum team to figure out who is going to fill in the product owner's shoes while they out on vacation. That may or may not be you. So if you're not comfortable talking to stakeholders, you know, C-level people, VPs, you know, maybe even the CEO of the company, then that might be something you might want to consider as well. Andriana, any afterthoughts? Yes. The other thing I will add when you want people to follow you without necessarily having direct authority, we could use the scrum values. If you are displaying commitment, focus, openness, respect, and courage, people are going to want to be around you. They're going to trust you. They're going to value your input. I can say in, in my personal experience, one of the things that I've noticed is I, I work in software. One of the things that I've noticed is a software engineer will stop talking to you if you don't have these values they, or if you're just not useful. So if you're not doing any of the things that Scott mentioned, they will eventually render you useless and stop talking to you. It's harsh, but that is the, that's the workplace. Can't say everyone was that way, but why would I go to someone just human nature? Why would I go to someone who's unhelpful? Exactly. Oh, very good points. Wow, we did a good job on that. Let's move on to the next one. Allowing for mistakes and growth. Take it away. Yeah, so you have to ask yourself here, are you able to allow others to learn from their own mistakes without getting involved? A lot of times we like to, at least some people, like to be the hero. It's great when we have a problem and you have the greatest idea and everyone's like, you know, bowing down to you and saying how awesome your idea was. But at the end of the day, sometimes allowing them to come up with their own ideas, even if they are going to make a mistake or if you disagree, everyone's not right, first of all. So we, we also can't have that mindset where everything that you believe is 100 percent correct, because that's not that's not always true. But I think the key here is allowing them to take full ownership, even if there is a mistake and being there by their side, helping them resolve the issue. Maybe not always by giving the answer. It could be facilitation. It could be um, just empowerment to own their own process, you know, providing feedback in a very constructive way. Those are just some ideas that I had. Scott, do you have any others? Yeah. Adding to the list of things you identified, I would say adopting a coaching approach to help the team develop their skills and their capabilities uh, and also use the retrospective to reflect on work, learn from mistakes and identify areas for improvement would be something else I was thinking about. Um, but awesome, awesome, great things that you identified. Nothing else to add other than those two items. Leading from the back of the room. What does the world does that mean, Adriana? Leading from the back of the room, this is where a scrum master displays being a servant leader who's actually empowering the team to take ownership of their work. So I talked about that a little bit with the last point, like allowing them to be owners. So the back of the room is really focusing on you're allowing the team members to take the lead in discussions and the decision making. Scrum masters, we can facilitate the process, provide guidance when needed, but we're not taking over the conversation. Um, it kind of reminds me of a coach on 
any coach, any sport you can think of, right? So basketball, for example, they're not on the field. They can't make every single decision. They, they may draw a play or two. They may give you some guidance. They may say, oh, no, this is this person's weakness or you're open over here, but they don't make the shots. They don't take the shots. They don't, they're not actually in the field of the game. Oh, those are all good points. I mean, as you were speaking, they kind of remind me of a stance that we have as a scrum master, as a mentor. But I know a mentor that comes with time, you know, over, you know, over, over time that comes. But um, no, that's a great job in talking about that. Nothing else to add to that. Now, at first, when you brought this here to my attention, when we was planning for this, I thought you was talking about training from the back of the room. So for the audience, this is not Sharon Bowman's work, training from the back of the room. This is leading from the back of the room. Awesome. Just want to make that clarification for everyone. Have growth mindset and practice humility. Andriana. Yeah, and we kind of made this two questions. So are you constantly learning and do you demonstrate humility? I, I briefly touched on it earlier when I was like, hey, like I, I don't always have the right answer. Being able to actually say that to yourself and not, that will help you not dominate the conversation and be realistic. The other thing is with constantly learning throughout my career, of course, I, like everyone else, I've started off with training, understanding what Scrum is, but I've also grown in my facilitation skills. I've grown in my coaching skills, my actual teaching skills, uh, even technical skills. I now have an AWS certification. I have even a PMP. So I have a variety of things that people may say, do they directly link? But they Someone actually did ask me that, like, hey, has this really helped you? I'm like, actually, it has, <laughs> you know, and I didn't learn it all at once. It took several years to get to this place. And it's going to take anyone listening several years if you're starting out to get to this place. But that's totally fine. Like, as long as you have a growth mindset and practice humility, these are really great attributes for a scrum master. Oh, great stuff. Uh, the first question, are you constantly learning? Yes, we are constantly learning. I thought when I was on my professional scrum trainer journey that by the time I became a professional scrum master, that was it. Not a professional scrum master, but a uh, professional scrum trainer. I thought that when I got that, I thought I would be at the end of the world, the end of the road. There's nothing else for me to learn. But I went into like a, a cave after that because we did so much work to get to that point. And I realized at that moment. I am. I still have a ton to learn about this game called Scrum. And we are expert level. We we at the top level of this game. And I, I don't know about you, Adriana, but I felt that way when I got my professional Scrum trainer. Uh, you know, designation. I wouldn't say it's a certification. It's a designation at that point. And then uh, how do you demonstrate humility? Now, that was difficult for me. That second question, very difficult for me because I'm a recovered perfectionist. My students, all of y'all, I, I talk about that in class, that Scrum requires you to bring your true and authentic self. And I'm a recovered perfectionist. So as a perfectionist, I wasn't too humble. I'm thinking about humility would be like admitting my mistakes and taking responsibility for them. If I said something, if it was wrong, I, I might have said, OK, OK. But I didn't apologize. I was missing the humility part of that. So. I'm a recovered perfectionist. I still work on that. I'm still working on some things. I'm being always open to feedback. Some of you know I go to Toastmasters. That's a way of being humble that, hey, I, you know, yeah, I'm at an expert level on here, but over here, I'm a novice. <laughs> In public speaking, I'm a novice. So I go practice at Toastmasters and try to work on that skill set to, to, to increase the areas in which I need improvement. Andriana. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's really great. I was thinking as you were talking about this, uh, professional scrum trainer journey, I probably study a little bit more as a professional scrum trainer than even the journey. So I would say I studied a little bit when I started out, studied a little more along the way, studied a lot more on the journey to become a professional scrum trainer and study even more now. So I'm probably learning a lot more within these last few years than the first eight years of my career, right? So some of it feels a lot like those college days where now I make, make like remembering my study habits and picking those up because there's really great content out there. There's always something more to learn. And I think the other part that I, I'd like to add is um, putting the team success ahead of your, your goal, your personal goals and your ego. 
you kind of mentioned somebody was like, hey, I want you to uh, have the team increase velocity by 25%. There are people that do that. They're like, well, this is my personal goal. I'm supposed to do it instead of actually thinking, what is the right thing to do? So the other thing I like to say is get it right instead of be right. Once I learned that, I felt like there was a big shift in my career and my personal growth. And I never had to ask someone to follow me after that. They just did. They were just down. Wow. That's powerful. Can I record? Can I repeat that again? So get it right versus being right. Is that what you said? I mean, that's powerful. That's what I said. Yeah, we're going to just put it on the loop for everyone. <laughs> get it right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Great discussion there. To recap, answer these five questions in your own spare time. Think through these. Are you actually able to stand firm on the principles and values and live those out? Are you able to influence without direct authority? Are you able to allow others to learn from their own mistakes? Are you able to lead from the back of the room? We discussed what that was. And then practice a growth mindset and be humble. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's episode on whether being a scrum master is the right path for you. Of course, we're a little biased. We hope it's the right path for you. But we also want to make sure that there are <laughs> great scrum masters out there. We don't want to train people that aren't going to embody the values and principles. We talk a lot about that in our trainings and what it takes to be a good scrum master and even a great scrum master because we all start off a little, we all start off good and then we want you to become great. So just remember being a scrum master does actually require a unique set of skills, mostly soft skills, <laughs> but there are a few hard skills in there that you can learn and grow and, and different things like that. Like I said, I have a few hard skills that, that help me be a better scrum master and you can learn those over time. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. It's pretty legendary. You have a greater attention span than a goldfish, just to let you know. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. <laughs> Make sure that you subscribe, like the video and leave a comment with your question or if you have any feedback for us. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can see our, our LinkedIn links in the description, the Discord link. Uh, you could take courses with us and so forth. Thanks everyone.